And here we are. News time again. News time. It's Turtle news soup. News time again. News. We got the news going news. on. Everybody. Yeah. So uh, welcome to Channel 6 to Midnight News. And uh, yeah, we have some stuff to talk about. There are a couple of things. Now, it's not It's not the... Uh, this is nothing groundbreaking necessarily, but it is still very, very interesting and very telling of some future events uh, that are on the horizon and in the vein of NECA and their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monsters line of action figures that, if you hadn't known, are based on the movie Turtles. So that's a whole thing yes. that, that came out, especially when uh, Judith Hogue said that she's, yeah. you know, the the figure based on her for... Uh, Bride of Frankenstein that was just really well I don't know if it's out physically yet but I know that it people are pre-ordering it and all that stuff like that so it'll be yeah. out soon uh physically but in the meantime we have we're gonna take a look let me see here let me see if I can uh pull that up real quick on the old screen we have Michelangelo as the mummy now we knew this was coming we knew that Mikey as the mummy was coming and uh we saw a glimpse of him I believe we saw him on the Raphael uh box that on the side you could see they showed him and then they showed April but it was uh it was a silhouette of April, if I recall correctly. And this version of the the box looks so much cooler. This, um, there was something not right about the eyes. And if I recall correctly, again, uh, the box, the R Raphael's, when they first re like teased it, the, the, so the side profile of the box, it showed uh, Raphael as Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein's monster, Leo as the hunchback, and Mikey as the mummy. But Mikey and Leo both were like, I guess con not necessarily concept, but early, early versions of them. And uh, Mikey just had something with his open left eye that just didn't look right. Uh, it wasn't quite there. It just looked strange. Here, it looks fantastic. And I love this. It is piercing and just like, just, it just, you have to stare at it. And like, I've been staring at this for a minute now and I still love it and I keep loving it. And it is so nice to just, I'm really excited about these cover, these, these, um, these box arts because it's, it's always nice when you can, um, maximize your purchase in my opinion, at least. And, uh, yeah. So, um, so when you buy the toy, you also get the box. So you have something, to, two things to display essentially. And I'm always a fan of that. Well, now not only did we get the uh, front of the box, we also got the back of the box and we get to see a little bit of what uh, Mikey comes with through ancient dust and pizza crust lurks. Michelangelo, the mummy as the mummy. And uh, yeah, so he looks fantastic and I am super excited about this figure. He's got the uh, deteriorated face that, um, that we saw, I think it was Donatello, but there might have been all four of them from the original movie that they showed, uh, where age had, you know, taken its toll on these figure on these uh the the suits that they wore in the movies. So they have a little bit of homage to that. And then uh one of my favorite things that they they included is that he's got Onk Nunchucks, which that is so cool. That is I, I love appropriating the properties to like when you mix them together, like the mashup of this, like this is what I I'm here for. I want to see all this stuff. And so, yeah. And he true to neck form. He's got so much detail. It's unreal. And I am super excited about this figure. I think they did a really good job with this one. And uh, yeah, I am really excited about this. Uh, let me, uh, let's see, let's check back in with Ryan real quick and see if, uh, I want to get Ryan's take on this. Uh, let's see. So Ryan, what do you think? Like, are you looking forward to Michelangelo or is this not impressive to you? What, what's your take on this? I mean, this might be the one I buy. I mean, really? like I, like there was something about it. We caught a preview image and I know I, I had hope for the eye. I thought the mm -hmm. eye looked kind of cool. I thought it was kind of shot in a weird way. Right. Um, that box art is really tempting. Um, it, I love, I love all of it. I would love to see a little more, uh, from it, and just yeah. see kind of like what's going on with the wraps, like, like you know, like some some more higher kind of res, like, uh, you know, kind of like what they what they gave Raphael in his his big reveal. Um, oh, okay. But I gotta say, this is kind of topping it off for me. I really? mean, yeah. the only guy that might be able to unseat him for me mm -hmm. would be obviously the one that we're going to get into next. Which right. Is, uh, All right. So speaking of this, Ryan is Ryan is alluding to this. Let's take a look here real quick. Mm -hmm. Here we go. 
Donatello officially as the Invisible Man. So this is our first look. We did not know that Donatello, who Donatello was going to be. We weren't. We there was no. They didn't tell us anything. I don't recall them dropping any hints outside of this, like this drop. Uh, I think on their Instagram they said uh, they they posted Michelangelo's box art, and they said uh, in the in the um, comment section or something below, uh, like you know look closely or you'll miss it or something, or you won't see it or something to that effect. And that's the only reference they made to like, okay, we'll scroll through and oh, there he is right here, the invisible man. Now this is showing him on the box. This is not an actual, um, like this is a drawing. This is not a physical, uh, uh, picture of the, or physical of the toy, like a photo of the toy. Uh, this is a drawing, at least from what I can tell. And so it looks really rad. It's got Donnie in the turtle, like his head is like wrapped, uh, much like the invisible man's face was. And he's got some hair sticking out, which is interesting. Cause, uh, last I checked, Donnie didn't have hair, but Leonardo did have some hair, uh, for, as the hunchback. Uh, he's got the goggles, he's got a um, trench coat, and he's got like a purple uh, scarf or some sort of fabric on his chest, and that's really all we've got we to, to go off. But this is the reveal. This is them saying, hey, Donnie is the Invisible Man, and I, based on this, if it looks like this, this box art is very compelling and like, I, I mean, I'd buy this figure if I didn't know uh, anything about any of this. I would definitely buy it based off of that uh, that box art. But like I said, this is a drawing. It's not a production photo like the rest of them have been. But uh, but yeah. So uh, Ryan, what's your take on Donnie now? Your favorite turtle gonna be the Invisible Man? Did you did you see this so, coming, Ryan? I was hoping because we the Invisible Man has a uh, precedent for being made into a TMT Universal uh, toy, mm-hmm. uh, Universal Monsters. Uh, it's been right. made before, uh, famously, uh, with the translucent uh, translucent plastic, which is, yeah. I mean, when we reviewed that initially, like one of our favorite toys ever. Um, oh yeah, so good. So uh, I do. So so uh, just doing a little bit of background. So um, the original Invisible Man movie uh, was came out in 1933 and featured Claude Rains uh, as the Invisible Man. And um, in photos you can see from that, he the wrappings do have hair like sticking out of them in several places. Oh, okay. Um, like brown hair. So. I believe that that is kind of part of the whole thing. Maybe. Maybe in the uh, in the movie the hair so you see the hair sticking out and like brown hair and that is that is in keeping with like Claude Rains um, kind of portrayal of Donnie uh, or of the Invisible Man so it looks really good um, I'm really excited about it I they're doing a lot of really interesting things uh, uh, Games Workshop who's like a like a model company who you know makes like war gaming. Uh, miniatures mm. has been doing a lot of stuff <coughs> with invisible things. Ooh. They have a uh, one uh, one figure that is or miniature that is a invisible warrior, and all he has is armor. And there's a lot of negative space, and they're really creative on how they like have. It has a cape, yeah, so different parts attached to the cape, and then one boot like is on this rock. And like when you look at the miniature, you're like, dude, yeah. it's like he's not there, but he's just wearing oh. the armor, and it's like. The engineering is ridiculous. Yeah. And I wonder what they're going to engineer here. Yeah. Now, Claude Rains, obviously, because of the effects in the 30s, is always just shown in his wrapping, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But later incarnations of the Invisible Man with special effects did show um, him as, you know, being, you know, invisible Invisible. in certain parts. So I'm very curious about what feature they're going to have. Yeah, and if they have a feature that makes him look invisible, uh, yeah, maybe a part is translucent or something like that would really blow me away. But just the looks of what I'm seeing, very Claude Rains with the goggles and mm. everything like that, that does have me interested. And I think for me, it's it's kind of between the Mummy Mikey and and Invisible Man Donnie. I feel like those are like taking my uh, taking my attention away. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I. I, I really do like this. I'm looking on, uh, looking at this image again. Uh, the uh, here, let me see. Let me actually pull it up again because I want to. That's what we're doing, you know, visuals. Uh, look at his the wraps on his face, uh, on his where his mouth is. It looks like teeth because of the way the wrapping is. 
Like it's it's instead mm-hmm. of horizontal, it's vertical. And that's that's some subtle stuff that's like just I love that attention to detail because that, that's where his teeth would be. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know if they intended on that or if I'm just projecting that onto the Invisible Man. Um, but that's what I see when I look at it. And uh, I, I, I'm really loving that. And again, like we keep saying, you know, NECA's, you know, attention to detail is is fantastic. Oh, and yeah. they always knock it out of the park. Um, but I am like, oh, you said something and I lost my train of thought now that I was talking about the teeth. But... Yeah, I am. Oh, the translucent stuff. The 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 what's he, what's he yeah. going to come with? Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. So, yeah, uh, for those who don't remember, we mentioned it a second ago. Uh, Playmates made this version of the of the character, uh, but as Michelangelo, and he had orange translucent parts, and it was fa- fantastic. Mm-hmm. If they did that on this, that would be amazing. Like, I I don't know what I'd do. Like, I mean, I'd probably I mean... buy it, obviously, but like that would just be like amazing. Especially even if they just did like two hands that are translucent. And and they're purple. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, I, I that, think they could. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it would. It would take a lot for them to do that. Now the other thing I could see them doing, which so, I I don't know if they did it. I think McFarlane did it, and I think some other toy companies did it. Where uh, if there's an invisible um, character or something that has like just shoes, uh, they'll just put a box with the shoes in it, and they'll be a little less. It wouldn't cost as much, but they'll do that. They might just say it comes with extra hands and just have the slots for them. But they're not in there, and so that would be like really okay, okay. How and would you? How would you? That feel would be hilarious. Because, I would love it. Because and hate it's it. hilarious, and part of it adds to the collectability of it. I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Absolutely. But at the same time, it's like uh, okay, cool. So I got less plastic for it. Yeah. Before. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, like. Oh yeah, totally. And yeah, so that's um. That's one thing I could see. Now, the other side of this is that uh, you were talking about Game Workshop uh, making some stuff with the translucent parts and yeah. whatnot, invisible things. Uh, uh, Nintendo had done the uh, Amiibos, and they did a link uh, from, uh, I think it was Breath of the Wild. And they, okay. they made the mistake of using a kind of yellow translucent uh, piece for some reason. Mm. And the placement of this was between his legs. And it that's that's how that's not how you do it. That, and now, granted, this was one of their earlier ones, so they learned from that mistake very yeah. quickly. But yeah. hopefully, Neca knows that maybe he shouldn't. I don't know. If, I don't know how you would apply that to this, but you know, that's still to be that's that's there. Yeah, that's up there. You gotta you gotta yeah. you know yeah. take no, that no, into it, account. It's up there. I think uh, uh, well, yeah, lessons learned for sure. I um I could see there being like a like a purple tint to them would be kind of cool. Like oh, absolutely. A, Kind of a like an electric blue tint as well, just kind of make a little Ooh. bit like more like you know make it look a little bit more like ethereal. You know what yeah, I mean? would look would be really cool. Oh yeah, um, definitely. And there is some stuff they could do because the thing about Games Workshop is they don't do transparent. It's nothing. Oh like, oh, you're like it's just air. Like the the uh, the 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 miniature I'm talking about has no body. It's all oh just, I misunderstood like, then. Yeah, it's like greaves and a helmet. And in the greaves, like is like, or one greave is a sword, and then it's boots, and then it's a cape. Oh, like, and it, it's, okay. And it's it's and it, the way that it's mounted onto the cape, and things are mounted onto the weapons, and like the arm, the weapon holds the arm up, and one, it, right. The way it's done is like fascinating when you look at it. Oh, that's you, awesome. When it's painted and you back up, it doesn't look like you bought a model that's just some hands, some feet, and a helmet and a cape. Yeah, it looks like it's an invisible warrior. Like right, it looks and the engineering. I mean, like I mean, they don't they don't have like you know miniature engineering awards. I don't at least <laughs> done that are open to the public. I, but I yeah. always thought it was like that. That is like an all timer right there. So with speculation on Donnie mm-hmm. would be parts of him that are not there. Yeah. So imagine if like when his coat comes off, like right? If, if, or or maybe he's got his coat. And you can pull it back somewhat right. to show that there's nothing there because on say his left side, it's all like plastic going up the side of the coat holding the figure together. Right, so right, right. Parts like his whole abdomen could be open. Yeah, like stuff like that. Like you That'd know, be it wild. would be a lot of engineering, and I know that that would affect his posability. Yeah, obviously, um, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but. That would be amazing. It that, would be I, like that's the It'd only time. It's almost like I would. I I wouldn't be buying it for the plastic because they're, you know, obviously they don't have a. There's whole parts that aren't there, right? But I'd be buying it for the engineering 
and yeah, for the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the 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 shelf factor of like like a display this factor. This is like yeah. no other action figure. Yeah, right. Like this is like no other action figure. Yeah, don't pose him too hard because you could break him. But yeah. this is like an engineering marvel. Right. That like, reminds I, me. Like, yeah, that reminds me of uh, Gentleman yeah. Ghost from um, from DC uh, Universe Classics. Mattel made when mm-hmm. Mattel was making him. Uh, they did a similar thing, but just the head. Uh, it had the top hat, but the collar went up to brace that, and he had a monocle yeah. like on the, and, and that was amazing. I was yes. like, that's, that's that's so genius. The, the, using negative space in a really creative way, it, it would be very interesting. So I, I would be interested to in see how they engineered this, and I and I won't be disappointed if it's not engineered. I, I won't yeah. be disappointed if if he's because keeping straight to Claude Rains, like he wore gloves, a mm-hmm. full jacket, pants, like the head wrap, like uh the um. Even I mean, he even had like the the goggles, and they had a fake nose on them. Yeah, like oh. you know what I mean over okay. the wraps. Like it yeah, was yeah, yeah. apparent that he was trying to make himself like not show any of his invisibility. Right? right. Like so, if they go traditionally with that, I'm not mad at that. You know, yeah. it's more like engineering the negative space, translucent like accessories or other mm-hmm. options. Those are those are things that would take it from like you know. From nine to midnight, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm already, I'm already, you know, sticking straight out. I, I, I mean, I gotta oh, watch geez. out. I, I could bump into something. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, like going up to midnight, like maybe a little extra would be really wild. But like I that said, I'm be. not disappointed. And I'm not out if it doesn't have those things. But man, if it did, yeah. If if they reached for it, like how how amazing would that would that figure be? That would like, be awesome. It's just really exciting. Well, um, so with Donatello now. You know, we now know that he's going to be the Invisible Man. That leaves, yeah. is, if I recall, Shredder and Casey Jones from the movie line that have not yes. received, oh, and Splinter, who have not received um, uh, uh, counterparts in the Universal Monsters uh, line. And so I'm curious where they're going to go with those. Because, uh, like we said earlier, they're basing these off of the movie line of figures. So it would stand to reason that mm-hmm. whatever movie line of the whatever figures the movie line has, those will get counterparts, and uh, yeah. So I'm curious what what they're going to do with with Casey and Shredder. Um, I can yeah. see Shredder because you you might could argue that like a werewolf uh, uh, for Splinter, but that would seem like it'd be too easy. Um, but then again, it might it, just be it right what be. it needs to be. But so we're missing we're missing Dracula. Oh yeah, Dracula, okay. a werewolf. We're missing uh, the werewolf. Uh, we're missing uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one I have for Shredder. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah, let me know. We're missing the Phantom of the Opera. Who oh. is a universal monster. That's true. Um, technically. Like, like it's, yeah. he's never, he's not thrown in often. But he is technically a universal monster. And he's been used as such. Right, right. Like I said, okay. if you you know look at any like you know just googling it right now just to just to see right like if you mm. see a lot of their classic retro art you don't see him, yeah. but in other licensed Universal Monsters things you do see him. He gets included. So I think it would actually be a really cool like kind of like fade and kind of like uh, Deke if they made Shredder into the Family of the Opera. Could you imagine him with the with the partial mask? Oh, that'd be kind of like neat. Part of his like chrome like look and like right, the, but the blades are just on that side, and that would like be interesting. I, I could see him look and with and with the big cape and the the dark blue or black suit mm-hmm. uh, with the tie. I could see him looking like super badass, hmm. super badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, I mean, uh, because they would have a chance to do a, a human sculpt on the other side of his face, right? Which they have. So you would get that. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. would be. Yeah, I mean, their 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 normal human head sculpts are, are amazing. They're, they're, right, right, right. They're uh uh. What what was the company that used to do the super photo real stuff, like Michael Jordan, where it looks like Michael Jordan? You're like, what the hell? Oh um, goodness, I, I can't remember the company. You were oh, you talking about, about they they you, they you talk about Hot Toys that um Hot Toys, yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're like a little yeah, bit bigger, they, but they're like they look just like. They're, they're photo, they're something. photo real, like like yeah. they, like hot. Like, just Google like hot toys, uh, Michael Jordan, and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, so that's it's Michael just, Jordan then, He's yeah, smaller, <laughs> or like uh, Michael Jackson. I think they did that Michael Jackson, and it's it's dead on. Um, so like imagine, so 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 yeah, their sculpts are like honestly like three quarters of the way to hot toys sometimes. 
Mm. Like like Judith Hogue has looked great. I mean, like mm-hmm. they're they're so good at it. Imagine if you had Oroku Saki from the movie. Yeah. As part of that face, it would look mm. just amazing. So that 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 yeah. that's my vote for Shredder. Interesting. Phantom of the Opera. Because I'd forgotten about the Phantom of the Opera, but th- when you brought it up, I'm thinking, see, because he has the cape already. Shredder Shredder has the cape, which that's a big part of the Phantom of the Opera. But the it's bigger part is the mask. Yeah. Who Casey's big thing is his mask. So I I'm I could see the same argument being made for that, where it's half of Casey's mask. But that would be interesting too. It. But one seems like it's the obvious choice. And the other one might, I don't know if they'll go with that because already they've subverted some expectations with, with this line and um, mm-hmm. given Leo as the hunchback and stuff like that, people weren't too thrilled yeah, with that. Yeah, no, like being more of like a subservient role and, and they've mm-hmm. definitely uh, taken Donnie up, they, but they've been predictable. So they, so they did take Donnie. Do, Donnie, I remember initially we were just talking about it. I was, I kind of had for Victor Frankenstein because mm. it'd be a really yeah. good pairing with, with you know, and we, know we have the bride. Of Frankenstein, we have Frankenstein's monster, and we have you know Victor Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. But they kind of they kind of juke you a little bit, but they put him into a scientist role, right? Right. Like the Invisible Man is a scientist, and that's mm. like kind of part of it. Mikey is the mummy; is just really fun. Yeah. Um. So where would they put a Casey? You yes. know, like would, would would they try to you know exceed expectations? I just feel like Casey as the creature from the Black Lagoon wouldn't be a fit. It's like yeah. Where where you get where you where you coming from with that? Although now, doesn't doesn't he have longer hands, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, because he Casey has that reach, fish fingers, and he's got that reach on on that shoulder rub. That's like, yeah. well, that's just down the shirt. I don't know that's, what you're doing yeah. with those hands. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, another person that we kind of didn't mention is like the mole people. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, like yeah. They are technically Universal monsters as well, but they're mm-hmm. very they're not as iconic. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I don't know. I don't know where they put it. I mean, anybody could be Dracula. Shredder could be Dracula too. I can see that. I can see that. Got got a cape, you know, sharp things. You know what I mean? Like, that could be a thing. Mm -hmm. I wish, I love that they're based off the movie, but I kind of wish almost that they were just based more on the loose property. Yeah. Because Leatherhead, as the creature from the Black (sighs) Lagoon, would be. That'd be cool. On my shelf. Yeah. Like, because he's just such a good fit. If we just had a Leatherhead, just Leatherhead Universal Monsters line, that would be amazing. I'd buy all of them. Yeah. Just give me that. Absolutely, so, Jess yeah. Harley. What do you Jess want? Jess Harley. You can't go wrong with Jess Harley. Yeah, but but uh, anyways, yeah. Like, what do you guys? What do you guys think about this whole thing? Like, like we seem like we've got at least the first wave. Like, yeah. do, you, do you feel like there's going to be any more reveals? I feel like this is. I feel like we're about tapped on the Universal Monsters at least for Run One. Mm-hmm. Like, do you believe that to be true? If I recall correctly, he, I forget what interview it was. It was probably a whoosh cast interview yeah. or something. But um, I believe there were hints that they had a second wave already established. Mm. But I think, you know, generally we think of, uh, maybe not generally, but I guess I thought of like the first four uh, on the side of the box. That's wave one of, of Raphael's box because he was the first figure. Um that that would be wave one and then wave two would be Donatello and then whoever else was left, which would have been probably Splinter, uh, Shredder and Casey. Okay. So yeah, but they referenced that there was a two, there was, there was a second line and then they Uh mentioned possibly a third or at least a little bit of a third, but the way they're releasing these now, go ahead. Yeah. I would say, of course they, they control the flow of information. Yeah. So they definitely had a false narrative going on. Where it was kind of like, oh, like we got the three turtles in April. Mm. That's it. Like, you know what I mean? They they ran that on you a little bit. Cause I remember yeah. that was like, yep. And, you know, we're definitely hoping to get back to, I think I remember that interview, like, you know, definitely hoping to get back, you know, get to Donnie at some point. Mm. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, well, that's wave two. And now I think they're just, we don't, we don't know what it is. All I'm, I guess my question to you guys in the comments below or email us at turtleshoopshow at gmail.com. That's the hotline. Let us know like what you think about this wave and, and, and what you're looking for out of it. You know what I mean? Like how big should it be? And you know, which if, if you're going if you're going full collector, let us know. But if mm-hmm. you're having to pick and choose, I'm interested to know based on what we've seen so far, say out of just the four turtles, like what are like 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 if you know, top two. Like, you know, like, what are you looking yeah. to get? What 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 do you feel like is value for your collection and what are you looking to do? I'd be very curious to hear that from you guys. 
Absolutely. Well, uh, guys, uh, we're gonna. Uh, that's gonna do it for the news segment today. Uh, I yeah. believe we have a we had a catchphrase, and uh, I think that's. Oh. I think that's well, th- throwing it over to you. For for Eric Crosby, this is Ryan Gunn signing off from Channel Six Three Nine.